Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome back to Facebook and another edition of Teacher Talk. I'm Angie Garza, Director of Professional Learning and Educational Services at ROE 47, serving Lee, Ogle, and Whiteside counties. And today we are very uh, excited and looking forward to having an opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into not only some of uh, the outstanding programs that we have going on in our three county area, but also to continue our month long series on looking at how COVID has impacted the 2020-21 school year. So joining me in these conversations for today, my friend and colleague and co-host for Teacher Talk, Ms. Stacy Dingus, our digital teaching and learning specialist. Good morning, Ms. Stacy. Good morning, Angie. I'm really excited about um, our conversation that we're going to have today because if there's anything that I've learned this year, it's that people really like to hear from the students and the people doing the work, you know, um, and there's nothing better than hearing uh, stories about successful students. So I'm happy and excited. It's kind of a, a good feeling to wrap up um, these, the end of the school year and feature some kids that have really done some great stuff. Our students uh, are doing incredible things. The resilience that they have demonstrated during the school year is certainly something to celebrate. Um, and so I too am looking forward to these conversations this morning. So in order to have these conversations, we have uh, recruited uh, representatives from our Whiteside Area Career Center CEO program to uh, speak on behalf of the program and their experiences this year, not only with entrepreneurship, but really, as Stacy mentioned, kind of navigating those COVID waters and uh, kind of putting a, a positive spin on just this unprecedented year of uh, change and um, the unknown. So I am going to uh, let everyone on our teacher talk this morning introduce themselves. And we're going to start with Lee Hartman from the Whiteside Area Career Center to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about the program. Good morning, Lee. Well, good morning. And thank you for having us. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of back history um, that people may not know about the CEL program. And I had the privilege to be at the ground level, um, which is really exciting. But the program developed in Effingham probably 15 years ago. And they had so much fun with it and thought it was so great that they decided we need to branch out. And so a few people from this area heard about it and jumped on board. And what's really cool about that, that a lot of people don't know, is that we were kind of first nationwide. There were four programs that came on it'll be nine years ago, and we were one of them, one of four. And now there's 50, over 50 programs across the nation in about six different states. And we all follow kind of the same protocol. Um, and you know, it is an entrepreneurship class and there are many out there, but we are unique because we all follow some very specific guidelines, such as never meeting in a school setting, always meeting um, in a business setting and dressing business casual and things like that. So. Um, lucky me to get in on that um, from the beginning. And then we grew so quickly um, uh, with uh, the Career Center having 17 schools that feed in. Um, we couldn't handle all the students interested and that's where Emily comes in. So I, I'm gonna kick it over to her, my co-facilitator. So thanks for having us. Yeah, so I'm Emily Zimmerman. Um, I served on the CEO board. I work full time at Sauk Valley Community College and was a mentor. And um, I kind of transitioned into a facilitator role. Um, I don't want to say by mere accident, but by circumstance that, as Lee said, we weren't able to fulfill the amount of quality CEO students that were applying for this program. So there's an application process. The students have to have letters of recommendation. And we were having you know, logistic uh, um, concerns as far as, you know, the students, another thing they're required to do is transport themselves. There's no bus that takes them back and forth to CEO. So if you have a student in, you know, Ashton Franklin Center or Amboy driving to Sterling every single morning, um, it posed as, as a little bit of an issue. So 
the board collectively said, we need to gain more investors. We need to branch this program out into an Eastern territory and capture more, more students. So that's exactly what they did. I think they spent a year and a half to two years um, promoting an East program, getting the investors um, because the program is free to the students. Um, the investors pay kind of for, I would, I would call it like their tuition to get in. And so we got the investors to be able to support a second facilitator and we opened up and we'll be in our third year in Dixon. So it's been, it's been really great to be able to grow the program, um, not only nationally through, you know, Effingham's um, headquarters, but locally here in the Sauk Valley area. Hello, I'm Katie Witherow. I'm a junior at Rock Falls. I was a part of the CEO class this year. Um, for my individual business, I did, it was called Katie Care. It was homemade body scrubs that were all natural and aromatherapeutic. Hello, I'm Grace Smith. I'm a senior at Dixon High School, and my individual business was um, Charcuty Queens with Ashley. Um, she's on here. And um, I plan on going to SOC after high school to study business. Hi, I'm Ashley Crawford and my individual business was also Charcuty Queens. We sold charcuty root boards um, at the trade show and we are still selling them. Um, I'm a senior at Dixon High School. So uh, ladies, I'm just now making this connection because I, um, for the first time, was able to go to the, the trade show um, out at the mall. And I do believe that I bought charcuterie cups from you, which we took home and enjoyed that evening. So um, was able to invest a, a lot of dollars at that trade show. And what an incredible um kind of display that was uh, to have all of you able to showcase all of your talents. So um, very tasty. Thank you so much for doing that. I am a fan. Thank you. Yes. Um, so, you know, along that lines, you know, this work and this learning is very experiential and it's, it's quite inspirational. So I am really curious um, as we're kind of digging deeper into this program, um, what makes students want to participate? So I, I think I'm going to start um, with you, Lee. In your experience with your longevity with this program, why do students get engaged in the CEO program through the Career Center? Um, you know, it's funny you ask that question because sometimes I will ask students at the beginning of the year why they're in the class. And there's some interesting answers. And one is a uh, tip, huh, some, some we may not like to hear because they are different, but one is they want to learn more about business. Um, sometimes they say things like, you know, we got to do a lot of, I want to go out all these cool places. And along with that is to get out of school, quite honestly. It, it, and, and I don't think, mean that in a negative way, like they hate school, but they like the idea of being out and about. Um, others, this is uh, typical, is they want to improve um, their communication, um, they might see themselves as shy and, and probably Emily can address that even more, um, that, that's typical. And then uh, here's another one that I think is interesting. My parents wanted me to do it. A and because the parents are actually big promoters of the program with, because they know the value. Um, and then the kids are like, but boy, I'm glad they encouraged me. I'm glad I did. I mean, th that's what I've heard. So. Emily, I, I probably stole things that you would say as well, but please add. No, that's those are all great. Um, we we do quite a bit of, I would say we have a subcommittee that does a little bit of marketing to to let kids, juniors, in, incoming juniors um, and seniors know about the program. Uh, we did a video this year. Obviously, we couldn't get in the schools, but a lot of the reason that kids do it is also through word of mouth. They have friends that are a grade ahead of them. Um, that did the program or had a sibling that was in the program and it just sparked their interest. Um, you know, I work in higher ed primarily. Um, so it's, it's fun to be able to take high school students and kind of put them in this higher ed setting as far as, you know, in higher ed, our, our teaching style is very, very transformative. We do transformative learning and there's a lot of discourse. So the students take out of what we teach them, whatever they can as far as more um, direct instruction, here's your exam. You know, we don't have textbooks for CEO. We don't have exams. Um, it, it's just such a unique, 
platform. And I think just kind of that, that interest sparks in those students, like, and, and it, I mean, they're, they're, I don't want to say the best of the best, but like there's prestige involved in this program as well. And um, the community knows about CEO and it's something that they can put on a college um, application. They can put on a resume and it's really, really going to build them for the future. Those are all really incredible reasons. Um, so I'm really interested from the student's perspective. Uh, Ashley, when you listen to your, your facilitators share some, what they believe some of those reasons are for students to engage, would you agree, disagree? What, what was your personal calling? Um, personally, I was most intrigued by um, getting to know Dixon more. I feel like I did not know Dixon. I did not want to stick around here. I wanted to go to the suburbs. I wanted to get out of here because I thought we had nothing here. And I really, I was told that I would learn a lot from past CEO students, um, just about our town. And I am so glad that I did because I will stick around here now. And I do want, there's things that I would like to do. And that I think I could do because of this program for our town. And also I really like to make connections um, and this program really did that for me. So I, I've been offered, I have two jobs through CEO now from CEO. So um, it's an incredible program and it is definitely something I would encourage anyone to do. Katie, being the uh, junior representative here today in our group, um, any different perspective that you would, you would add to what Ashley shared? Um, I would have to agree. I think the biggest thing that intrigued me was word of mouth, like Emily talked about. Um, there's not one bad thing that people have to say about this program. Um, the opportunities that it offers, like Ashley said. Um, yeah, and also I have to agree with Ashley. The fact, like I think a lot of us as young teenagers now, like want us want to move away from our community. But taking this class, you realize how much your community has to offer as long as you're involved. And I've learned that through this program. Well, there's a couple of things that both of you ladies mentioned. One was about that, that community piece. And sometimes I always say we have these hidden gems in our communities and there's so many opportunities. Um, so how do we identify and capitalize on those? But the other thing, Katie, you mentioned was, you know, the, that, that learning aspect. So Grace, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you, what have you learned as a result of participating in this program? How have you grown as a, as a person, as a student, and as an entrepreneur? I have grown so much from when I started the program. I used to be super shy and like never wanted to talk in front of anybody. And my communication skills have gotten a hundred times better. I also just, I don't know, my confidence level is just has grown so much also. Ashley, how about you? Uh, have you experienced similar growth? Uh, anything that you would add? Um. I was not as shy as Grace was, but I did learn to be able to talk to people um, more confidently. Um, so that was a big help. And also just knowing where I am. Like I put myself down so much more than this program has made me feel like I can do anything I set my mind to and plenty of people that support us all to do that. That made my heart swell. I, I love that reflection. Thank you so much. Um, Katie, what, you know, in addition to what you have learned from this program, how do you think it will help you in the future? You're a junior. Um, and so you, you have some time before you kind of enter whatever you choose to do with your life uh, beyond high school. So what are you taking with you and how do you think this will help you in the future? Um, I already feel like as taking as being a part of the class um, compared to my other peers back at like Rock Falls, I feel like I have a huge step like I'm a huge step ahead of them. Um, I was able to network amongst my community, so like keeping those uh, connections is going to help me like when I want to come back and find work or something like that. Um, but like the skills I've used. Um, I don't think today, I would, before this class, I would have been able to get on this Zoom um, without being nervous. Um, but like they said, just being more confident and knowing that I'm capable of doing like what I want to do. 
I am a former teacher and let me just tell you that you three young ladies just absolutely made my day and I'm sure that Lee and Emily are just beaming because um, that is that is a testament to a successful program so bravo um, just amazing um, so kind of talking about an amazing program let's talk about what a crazy year we had so Maybe Lee, could you start out and just briefly talk about maybe how COVID made an impact on this program? I mean, we know we, we could talk forever about all of the, the impacts that COVID had, but specifically on your program, what are a couple of things that immediately had to change because of the COVID restrictions? Well, the good news really is that the Career Center stayed open and person to person since August. So in some ways we look for the silver lining of COVID and it was the fact that kids couldn't wait to be together and through any of the programs really at the Career Center that could happen. And so we were in person since August and I can remember my students coming in and saying, oh, I just wanna see people, I just wanna be around other students. So we had that privilege. Um, the good news is we meet in a business setting so we can find a huge room and very different than a classroom. We were always able to distance ourselves um, the six feet or more, even with, with the 22 students. So um, that worked really well. And then we planned a lot of outdoor tours to begin with and, and try to um, capitalize on that. So it, it, worked in, it worked out okay for us, it really did. But there were struggles in getting tours and I'll, I'll let Emily talk a little bit more about that, um, especially with 22 students. You know, I, I had to split, things like that, but it worked, so. Yeah, I mean, I would say the struggles were there. Something that Lee and I, you know, really we we talked about, and I I leaned on her as my mentor through this whole program um, because my first year facilitating was in the midst of the pandemic. But um, you know, she just taught me, and CEO has taught me how to be flexible, and I tried to you know um, push that off on my students. You know, our second week of for the East Side, we you know we only had nine. We're still growing. Um, we're, we're growing exponentially for year three, but we had nine in um, our second year, we, we were put on, you know, a 14 day um, quarantine. So we learned really, really quick how to, um, you know, in those first few weeks of CER so crucial because not everybody knows everybody because you're putting in multiple schools together. So there's a lot of team building and bonding and those soft skills that we try to, to, to teach the, the kids before putting them in front of, you know, networking in front of professionals. Um, and so we had to do that through, through what we're doing right now through Zoom. And they did an incredible job. Um, they could not wait to come back. I think the, the biggest push from last year's program to this year's program is that the students wanted to be in class. They wanted to be in person. They were willing to spread out. They were willing to wear the mask as long as we were together. And um, that flexibility is going to take them through so many stages of their life uh, because I really, I think we can all agree that I really don't think Zoom is going to go away permanently. I think it's going to stick around in some aspect and, and these students are gonna be pros at it, so. I would just like to also add to that if I could that, um, and, and we could do it pretty, uh, what I would say COVID free because the homeschools were so stringent on their policies. So if any kid was around anybody, even if they didn't show symptoms, they, they were not in our class as well. Um, and so because of that, we were able to stay very healthy throughout the whole year, I would say for the most part, um, surprisingly, but I, I say kudos to those homeschools who had the strict rules. We had kids miss and be quarantined without a doubt that did happen to us, but it kept us all safe and it was due to those rules, so. Thank you for that shout out, Lee. Those school administrators will definitely appreciate that. Um, COVID school from the ones who were affected the most. Ashley, give me one thing about um, a change that you experienced this year. What, what was one change in COVID school with your, your, your experience this year? Um, our school offered remote and I think that was really hard for those who were at school and those who were remote. Um, I think the motivation wasn't there because it just kind of, it didn't feel like school. Um, we were either home or we were at school with very limited people. 
and I like to learn in a full classroom with people I know and a teacher I know. And so that was that was really hard for me. And I know I can speak for others too. Um, it just wasn't what it's supposed to be, I guess. Grace, what about you? What went well in COVID school? We don't talk about a lot of the positive things. Can you think of something that went well um, and that maybe surprised you throughout this year? Yes, I was really surprised that we are actually gonna get a good graduation, you know, with like people and having everybody there. I was also really surprised we had a prom. That was really nice to be with everybody. And for CEO, I was also really surprised with how many tours we ended up getting and grateful for the people who let us come into their businesses. I'm gonna interrupt real quick. Grace, stay unmuted because um, Stacy and, and Angie don't know this, but you took advantage of being remote. You chose not to go back to school because you got an opportunity through CEO with Matt Prescott. Do you wanna to touch on that real quick? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we went to Matt Prescott's, one of his restaurants, and he talked to us and Emily connected us. And I started making a menu for him for one of his new restaurants. It's kind of on hold right now because, um, because of COVID. But I'm, I don't, I think I'm still continuing to do that. But then I also got a job through that. And I now work at Palmyra, Palmyra. Katie, Thank we're going to, yeah. Katie, we're going to end with you. Uh, what about a struggle uh, this year in COVID school? I mean, you are our junior of the group, correct? And, and so um, Grace and Ashley kind of have a different perspective of, of it being their last year in high school. What about you? What's one thing that maybe you struggled with a little bit this year? Um, I think the biggest struggle, Ashley kind of touched on it was like sometimes having to result to remote, even though you do have the option to be in person. Um, there were times when like you're quarantined, you, you physically just cannot be there. And sometimes it would happen during crucial times. But I think whether it was a crucial time or not, um, learning from home, it just is not anything compared to learning in person. Katie, stay on with me for a second because um, what's next year look like for you? We know that you'll be back to school as a senior, right? But um, what's some, some future goals that you have maybe that you're starting to think about your senior year in high school as it begins? Yeah, um, so I do plan on going to a four-year university. I don't know where yet. I'm starting to dig in deeper and look for those, um, but I do want I do plan on doing the double major in business and finance, um, but I don't know much more than that right now. Good. Well, you have some time to think about it too. Grace, what about you? You seem to have an interest in like the culinary, food, you know, restaurant business. What's in your future? What do you think you're going to be doing? Um, I want to open a restaurant, hopefully multiple. And my ultimate, like my big goal is to open a country club because I, I want to have a, I wanted to have a spa, but I'm leaning more towards the restaurant. But if I could do both, that would be awesome. Ashley, what about you? What's your future goals? Um, so I'm attending stock next year. Um, I want to major in psychology and minor in business. Um, I also want to study abroad. That's a big reason I'm staying at SOC. Um, we, they have a really good program and I really want to travel and try new things and be in new cultures of learning. Um, and my biggest goal is to make a difference. That's why I want to be a psychologist. I want to help someone that needs help. And I definitely want to help my community too. Like I said, I do plan on staying here now and I want to help those who need the help and our community that could use that, I think. Well, Facebook friends, what a positive and uplifting way to conclude our school year. We've spent the entire month of May uh, thinking about the lessons that we've learned from this year and really kind of setting our sights on next year as we re-enter another school year together. Um, I feel motivated, inspired, and energized by listening to our special guests this morning uh, from our Whiteside Area Career Center CEO program. So um, on behalf of myself, Stacey Dingus, 
Courtney Hartman, Emily Zimmerman, Ashley Crawford, Grace Smith, and Katie Witherow. Thanks so much for tuning in to our teacher talk today. Uh, we will be back here to kick off the month of June with some changes that we are going to be um, experiencing in our own office. So stay tuned and come right back here next Thursday for another edition of Teacher Talk.